them. Obviously, I named Omega as a name. <laughs> but, but also, you can express it via Diophantine equations using results of uh, Matthias Shevitz, and I happen to use results of Matthias Shevitz and Jones on Hilbert's 10th problem. And it turns out that you can um, express, I did it in 87, the nth bit of Omega can be expressed as the question of whether a particular Diof exponential Diophantine equation with a parameter has a finite or infinite number of whole number solutions. You can construct an exponential Diophantine equation, which just means there are variables, unknowns in the exponent. And there's a parameter, and it has lots of unknowns, but there's one unknown which is a parameter. You fix its value. So you fix its value to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then for each particular value of the parameter, you ask, is the number of whole number solutions of this exponential Diophantine equation finite or infinite? And I constructed this exponential Diophantine equation, which happened to be 200 pages long, but it's one equation with 20,000 unknowns, in such a way that the number of solutions is finite or infinite um, exactly depending on whether that particular bit of omega is 0 or 1. So I think that makes omega, uh, a logician would say this means it's only at level 2 in the arithmetic or the clean hierarchy, but I prefer to say it in the understandable terms I just told you. Um, now, uh, uh, some other people, uh, believe it or not, a physicist called uh, Q in Australia, and Toby Ord, who I think was just a graduate student in Australia, came up with another Diophantine equation, also exponential, which gives you the bits of omega in a different way. They did it last year. And their way is don't ask if the number of whole number of solutions of this algebraic equation is finite or infinite, like I do. The number is always finite with their equation. And you just ask if the number of solutions even or odd. And th that answer gives you one by one each bit of omega. So, so that, I think, makes omega seem a little more real. Now, but if you take a very, very down-to-earth attitude and you only believe what you can see, you'll say omega doesn't exist. The question of whether an, a Diophantine equation has a finite or infinite number of solutions is meaningless. You know, I only, if you have a completely finis finitistic attitude, you know, that, that if, then there is no limits to mathematical reasoning because uh, there's no halting problem, for example. Turing's halting problem is only because you put no limit on the time, you see. If you limit the time to be simply a billion, billion, billion years, well, then you just run the program for that long and you see whether it holds or not. You only get into trouble if there's no time limit. So I think that mathematics gets in trouble only with infinity. That's when you have l l problems. And if you have a very finitistic attitude, you're going to say infinity is an illusion, and then not all of this is meaningless. But, you know, I like mathematics. It's a game I've enjoyed playing. So I like to believe infinity. But I believe in whole numbers more than I believe in real numbers. And then, you know, the Cantor Alephs keep going. And, and if you keep adding axioms of higher or infinity, you know, these crazy large cardinal axioms, it starts to get more and more theological. So very quickly, I think a lot of us start losing faith. So, so I'm not... <laughs> I don't uh, know if that's answering your question, but... Gregory, I have a question that has been put to you ah, yes. from Peter, by Peter from FCCN.pt. Where's that? No, 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 sorry, sorry. It's Peter. So, Peter, do you believe that real numbers should be forgotten in mathematics also? Should real numbers be forgotten? And forgotten in mathematics also. You know, I don't want to ruin anybody's fun. If, if you are doing lovely mathematics with real numbers, please go ahead. You know, it's better than spending all your money gambling or, uh, or drinking too much aguardente. <laughs> a little is okay, but, you know, so, so by all means. But I personally, as you be probably begin to suspect from this, I feel more comfortable with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like Kronecker or Pythagoras, than I feel with real numbers. You know, maybe this is a flaw in my personality. On the other hand, the only piece of mathematics I've done, which may be remembered for more than two minutes, is this omega number, which happens to be a real number, which is sort of embarrassing. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. The paradoxes Th of life. Thank you very much, Gregory. Thank In you. fact, I believe that you have nothing against omega number, at least, <laughs> and we thank you very much once more. A pleasure. Thank Thanks for inviting me here to Lisbon. <laughs>